Hello, hello, and we are back with more of the lessons of the fundamentals. And in this case, we will take the concept behind the clumps. And I will try to explain a little bit of how the clumps break and how the clumps get affected. So we saw before that there are different forces that affect our clumps, right? So these forces are going to be the way that we decide and the position that we decide and that's going to create the spread of our clumps. But there are also different ways to open up the clumps. Let's say that my force is here and the moment that I decide that I have a second clump system, so that the moment that I actually duplicate these to have it here. So this is my first clump system, right? And I created a second I create a second clump system here. So let's say that I have one clump. Let's put them on different colors so we can read them easily. Two clumps. Three clumps and four clumps. So those are my clumps. So I have these four clumps creating that clump inside, right? So what other way do I have and what will happen if I remove this effect? So if I remove these fours from my main clump, what will happen is that my main clump is going to be like this. But what's going to happen to my individual clumps? So my individual clumps now will not follow the shape of the main clump. As simple as that. So we will have as a result something like this. So now the influence of this clump is non-existent and we just have the shape of this clump if my force it's zero force so no force full force or full attraction however you want to call this so knowing that we can control certain parameters and read certain looks so you can see here that we can actually add and remove effects of the clumps according to the force or the envelope. But there is a different parameter that affects also this force. So we just not have force as normal force. Remember that we saw before that we can have clumps that are like this, right? So if my force is here, then my clump can do this. See, oops. That's better. So this will be my clump. But what happens if to this clump, what I do is to remove the attraction force. The attraction force is different than the mask. Why? Okay, let's try to explain this on a simple way. So, we have this as the base groom. Let me just turn off the other one. Is this one? I have all my other nodes here too. So let's try to clean this up a bit. And let's put this at the end. If you hear some odd sounds, it's that it's super, super windy and the window sounds and everything is sounding right now. So, what happens and how the tightness work? That will be the force of attraction. It's normally called tightness. So it will be the force that is produced from the curve or from the center of this clump, let's get a more vivid color, towards the edge, 
and that defines the profile, right? So this force of attraction defines the profile along the curve. And this is the attraction force. So if I reduce the attraction force here, then the result is going to be like this. So it will have no clump, but we will still preserve the shape that is coming from the noise. This is important. The tightness or the attraction force of the clump is different than removing the clump. We're just not attracting to the center, but we are affecting with the shape. And I will explain a little bit later what does mean when we have more clumps or hairs inside. Then if we repeat this process and we take this guy here and what will happen then if I remove the influence of this clump? So if I turn the envelope or the mask of this clump off, well, the result is that this clump is no longer attracting my hairs. So the shape will not follow. That's the difference between attraction and not attracting. So if I change the profile of this clump, I can make it like this, but it will always attract. Or I could even make something like this and then pop it up later. So it doesn't matter. That's the tightness, but the shape is always going to be driven by the clump. The difference when you don't use the shape, but you use the actual mask means that you are not just not attracting to the tightness. We're not influencing the clump or the hair with the clump. So those are two different levels, which are the clump shape. Let me just turn this off so I can make something clear. So we have the clump area of effect that this will influence the hairs that live inside or the clumps that live inside to follow whatever the curve we have. So this is a top view of our clump. So if we decide to remove this effect, then it will not follow. This, if this is my curve, will mean full effect and this will mean no effect. Now, if we want to tight this up, that's a different effect. That will be the force of attraction, not necessarily the mask. Why is that? Because I can have a force of attraction here, but I can reduce the mask. So it's not attracted. And we can notice this really well if we have a shape like this or a clump, the same that my hair goes this way, but my clump goes that way because of the noise or because of the bend or whatever we're adding. If we have an attraction on, my clump can be like this with no tightness. And if we have a tightness and attraction on, my clump will be like this and will override those. But if I reduce that attraction, then that means that we will bring a blend between these two. So the hair can be attracted or not towards this. And let me explain this with the 3D software. So let's go to Houdini and explain this. Okay, let's say that this is, these are my clumps and this is my main hair, right? And these are my actual clumps. So that's fine, we are safe there. If I change my shape, let me just remove the width so we can have a better normal shape of clump and let has something a little bit tighter. So like this. So we have a tight clump. It's quite sensitive. So let's just get something more like this. If I have a super tight clump, that's not a problem. And I have this as my guide curves. So they are the clumps, right? 
So they're being attracted by and they define the clump shape. So what happens if on my hair, on my clump node, I remove the blend? You can see that the blend, the moment that I remove it, my clumps are not being attracted anymore. But if by the contrary, I remove the tightness, the effect looks the same. But that's only because my guides are straight and perfectly straight. So if I add a freeze or a noise to this effect, so I can break the shape of my guides, let's add something a little bit more random so we can see it better. So you can see here, these are my guides here, quite crazy guides, but they are following, the hairs are falling one to one. Maybe it's too crazy to explain the experiment. Right? So, if I remove the tightness, you can see that even if I remove the tightness, my hairs are still following the main shape. Even with the tightness out. That's really important. Because that's the difference between tightness and clump. Because this is just the attraction force that we were discussing before. This is the attraction force that this curve generates. And that's what it's trying to follow. But the moment that instead of using the tightness, and if I bring the tightness to one, I use my blend, you can see that the effect of my guide gets lost. So it goes, goes back to the actual zero base. That's the main difference that you will find between tightness and mask. They relate and they have a similar effect, but we have no tightness here. The difference is that we do have a mask. So the mask will drive the hairs and the tightness or the force will be the one that attracts towards the main curve. So that's for the actual profile. And also I want to show you what does it do to the secondary clumps, but that will be on the next tutorial.